Hello, my name is Gabriela Gonzalez and today I'm going to talk to you about the differences between a collagen membrane and a collagen scaffold. What you see here is a normal structure of collagen made by horizontal fibers of, of collagen and cells that is inside of this structure. This is a microscope view. So when we're going to produce a membrane or a scaffold, we have to separate these fibers. After this, we have to clean the immunogenicity and then we have to put it together again. But how can we do this? We do this through chemical cross-linking or other ways, other mechanisms or through sugar cross-linking. So the sugar cross-linking is going to permit us to have more links of sugar than a chemical cross-linking. Why? Because the chemical cross-linking is going to produce an inflammatory or local inflammatory process in the wounds. So it's going to be more safe. What type of products manage the sugar cross-linking? Only in the world, Osix Plus and Osix Volumax. They have the glymatrix technique that is unique for these two, membrane and scaffold. For, for, so first, I'm going to talk about the Osix Plus. This is, this is a membrane that when we see it in the microscope, I see a dense body. And this is the way we're going to see it clinically. We can hydrate it, that is the best way, hydrate it before we're going to use it and it's not going to expand or anything, okay? So this is the way we're going to see it and this is a study where we can see how the vascularization produced from the membrane. So it's going to begin in the month six, a process of ossification. This is very important. So I'm going to show you here a case of a patient that has a, a really bad condition in his teeth. So we are trying to save the teeth of him, but these two, we couldn't, we couldn't save it. So we decided to took it off and we took it. We didn't, we didn't do anything, only we put melatonin and then two months later we see this, okay? After this we decide to do the bone grafting. So how, do, how did we do it? This, you can see the bone that we had only and the length, it was very good because we have the crystal bone. So we put some Cenograft, we put some Osix Plus and I stabilize it with periosteal suture. For me, it's very nice because this type of suture helps help me to maintain the membrane in the place and to maintain the stability of the, of the bone graft. So this is the wound after we close it. And then the, the, the wound maintains open for a few months. So what happened in these cases when the, the wound opens? We're going to be very, very able to produce infection and to lose the bone graft. What happened when we use a membrane that is made with sugar cross-linking? What happened is, and in the literature says, we're going to have more stability of the bone graft that we put than the other membranes of other type and mechanisms that is processing by. So we can see that even the membrane exposed for a lot of months, we have a good result. And why? What can, what can I do when a membrane, when a collagen membrane in general is exposed? I have to indicate to the patient chlorexidine 0.2% each night, okay? The patient has to make rings. It's very important because of collagenases, that is the enzymes that goes on the membrane and it, it starts to reabsorb it. So it's, it's very important to manage chlorhexidin in these cases. We managed with the patient. I thought that we lost everything and I told to the patient, I think we're going to need to repeat again the process because I think we lose everything and the patient was so sad and then <clears throat> when we took the tomography nine, nine months after the procedure I saw this and this is thanks of the or, or 
This is because of the, of the O6 Plus, because the O6 Plus helped me to maintain the bone grafting secure in the place and stable even it exposed. So this is our result. The soft tissue was very beautiful and we put some 2v3 in the wound of the patient. This is a view of the histology of an O6 Plus from other patients. What happened? When an O6, O6 Plus exposed, it's not going to ossify, so it's very important to maintain the membrane inside of the wound. When the wound opens, it's not going to let the, the membrane to, to pass, to, to, to continue the process and ossify, so the membrane is going to start to reabsorb. So in this case, it reabsorbs, it was very helpful, but it didn't ossify. So it's very important for us to try to maintain always the wound closed. One thing is a membrane, that is the OS Express. And the other thing is a scaffold. So the scaffold is the OS Volumax. It's another thing. It's, it's like a membrane, okay? It's more thicker. And in this histology, I can see a lot of spaces. These spaces are full of, of oxygen, of air. So what happens when we put it in, in some saline or in the blood of the patient, when we put it in place, it's going to put out the oxygen and let the blood or the saline get in, okay? So this is a tip very important and I'm, I'm going to tell you why now. So this is a video for you to see how easy it is to cut it and it's better to cut it before we hydrate it, okay? So let's see this. This is the vial where it comes in different sizes so it's important let's see see the thickness is very thick and it grows when we hydrate it you are going to see it now so it's very important to to know where is the space that we want to regenerate okay we need to know very specifically the the, the millimeters that we need so this is the cutting that we did without hydrating okay and now i'm going to show you i don't know if you are going to be able to see the bubbles when it goes inside in the saline you see the bubbles around around the little bubbles and then okay it starts to hydrate we can see there a huge bubble that goes outside and it's supposed to take blood or take saline through, okay? So this is a study where we can see that the vascularization that is produced in the O6 volumage is huge more than the O6 plus. And it has a reason. So see how it grows. It was the same that we caught in the first video. So it was exactly the same pieces, okay? They were symmetric. You can see this, the thickness when we hydrate it and it all, when it's not exposed, it all is going to turn in bone. So that's the most important thing. So this is a case where I put a new 7 MIS implant and I didn't want to put bone, bone graft. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do my uh, corticotomies that you can do it or you cannot but I think it's better to do it and then I decide to do to use the O6 Volumax and this is the scaffold without hydrating it I put it without hydrating why because I said like okay I want for this to get full of blood not saline okay but because it was the exactly size that I need one time you hydrate it, it's going to be very difficult for you to cut it, okay? So that's very important for you to know. So it's, it's, you can do it, okay? But you are going to see that maybe it's going to fall in pieces. Don't worry about it. it use it as, as, as usually, okay? So this is the scaffold with blood and then I put periosteal suture. I call this the little monster. Why? Because it put 
blood inside and blood inside and you close the wound and it's going to absorb, continue absorbing. So it's going to be very important because if you close the wound with tension, you are going to produce that the wound opens and then it's going to be exposed. So in this case, I put this periosteal suture, maybe don't tie too much, they are too tight, don't tie too much, only to stabilize it. And then I close it, 18 days after, I can see the volume now is different. So in this case, the last one, I, I close the wound and I, I close it very, very good, without tension, but I made a mistake. And what is that mistake? Is that I cut the suture too fast. I, I retired the suture eight days after the surgery. So we have to do it in, in a longer time, in 15, 20 days, and use a monofilament to avoid the infections and the contamination in the wound. So important, release your flap, release very well or fix the O6 volumax with periosteal suture, important, okay? You don't always have to fix the O6 volumax or the O6 plus with suture because they are very, very manageable. But it's important when you want to produce more stabilization in the wound and in the place that you are working, okay? Don't worry about removing the suture too fast, don't. Use a good suture, wait 15 days, with 20 days, wait more, okay? And has patient. For, all, for us, it's, it's very difficult to have patient, you know? We always want to make results very fast and to have everything in a short time, but no, in these cases, we have to wait. This patient, I cut the suture at eight days. I thought, oh, it's okay. The wound is very stable, it is beautiful, so it's not going to be happen anything. And this is what happened. It's not bad because I have new tissue, that is the red one that we see in here, and this is the O6 volumax. What I did, I cannot suture this in this time. So I sent, I indicate the patient to have rinses with chlorexidine, 0.2%. 30 seconds each night, one time a day, and wait. What, what I know that is not going to ossify, okay? But the results were incredible. So I have seen personally that the part of the ossification and the part of the keratinized tissue is very nice in these two types of membrane and scaffold. So I invite you to use it and I hope these tips are helpful for you and I wish for you a good day. Thank you.